Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we are going to be painting Ben Bertolucci from the Resident Evil 2 board game and this is a little bit of a side character from the video games so Ben is a reporter and he has a bit of a nasty end if you've ever played the video game so we're going to paint this character up and we're going to try to keep him as close to the original game colors as possible so for this I'm going to use a little bit of a different uh, skin combination just to mix things up a little bit I'm gonna go down the route of using a Citadel paint set instead so what I'm doing here is I'm going to start with a Cadian flesh tone Now, normally you might associate a Cadian flesh tone with a more mid-tone sort of skin color uh, rather than a base but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Cadian flesh tone as the base rather than a darker base color just so that, that give us gives us the opportunity to paint uh, lighter skin tones later on so this is going to allow us to build those skin tones up much much brighter and much more vibrant later so for this i'm just using flash wash from the army painter um, if you want to stick with the citadel you can use a brightland flash shade they will work in pretty much the exact same way so there's no major difference there's nothing different that you need to do other than just add a little bit of water to the wash and apply this onto the model so that it dries in all of the creases and cracks from there, once that stage is done, we're going to build up some of the other colours and we're going to start by using the Ghost Grey for the shirt. Now, if you've seen me paint whites before, you'll know that I enjoy to base my, uh, base my models and base the colours in a nice, vibrant grey colour first. This allows you to have a good mid-tone colour and allows you to really bring that white colour back up and get the colour to really pop. So if you're painting things like a nice white shirt like this or the lab coats for the Birkins which we'll be doing in a different video, uh, it is a great idea to start with this ghost grey which is a really really nice light coloured grey and then we can build those tones back up to a really nice vibrant white and we'll get the whites to really really stand out and pop uh, but without uh, toning them down too much or without making them look a little bit uh, worn out or washed out which is a great great idea whites can sometimes be a little bit more complicated or a little bit difficult to sort of get your head around um, so this is a great idea and a great way to paint whites grey is a good good tone to start with if you start with black, it can be hard to bring those vibrant tones back up, uh, so grey is always a good place to start. Now from there, sticking with uh, Ben's uh, crazy awesome fashion sense from the original game, we're going to use a gold brown from Vallejo just to paint these sort of brown shoes that he's wearing. Um, this is kind of a yellowy colour, or at least it comes out like a yellowy toned colour to begin with, um, but as we sort of tone that down and bring it back up later, it will look really, really cool. I'm going to move on and use one of my favorite colors and I'm going to use the Dark Rust 302. If you are used to painting on my channel, you know that I use this to base a lot of browns. Uh, the reason being is because this is a really good thick color, um, it's a really good dark color and it allows for a great color to build up from. Again, you could build up from black if you wanted to, um, but then you wouldn't get the same sort of vibrant pop that will get out of the leathers a little bit later. So it's always cool to start with this really great dark dark brown color again if you're using citadels you can use a uh, dryad bark color this is a very 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 similar color to that um, and actually i used to use dryad bark quite a lot until i discovered uh, this dark rust 302 and that's all i'm doing is i'm just going to cover all of the trousers with this i'm also going to paint the hair as well although i thinned my paint just a little bit too much on the top part here uh, but multiple coats is better anyway so we'll get through this and i'm also going to put this on the tie as well because from all of the concept art and all of the pictures of ben he has this sort of red leather kind of look or this kind of reddy brown kind of color to the tie and trousers um, and a slightly more orange kind of uh, color to his hair so we're going to kind of uh, change those colors a little bit later but for now we're just basing all of those parts uh, using the same same color here and while I'm basing the, uh, the the tie I'm just gonna try to be as careful as possible not to get this brown on the whites especially around sort of the belt area um, gonna kind of want these areas and these parts of the model to be separate so that as we pick out those details it'll really really stand out later from there we're going to use a dirty red now you can use a multitude of different reds for this if you want i just chose dirty red purely because i like the name of the color this is a really really dirty red so uh, this is just a, a simple ak interactive sort of a kind of a red color with a, a slight slight sort of um 
a hint of sort of uh, like a purpley kind of hint to it as well um, and that's just going to cover his notebook in his pocket then I'm also going to use gunmetal which is again another channel favorite this color is great as a base color for your metals and your silvers this is a really good sort of um, dark dark color that you can build up from later uh, I don't think I'm going to build too much on top of the gun on top of his pistol you can uh, pop these colors later if you wanted to uh, but for me I think by the time I tone this down with the washes it's going to look just subtle and just perfect enough for me uh, but that's all just personal choice so from there we're going to use a strong tone and strong tone is pretty much just like Agrax Earthshade if you're using the Citadel colors and that's all I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to cover all of the brown colors that we've painted using this strong tone here. We're going to try to avoid the shirt as much as possible and of course avoid the skin as well and this is going to allow us to really tone down and darken down some of the uh, the browns. It's really going to bring out a lovely lovely sort of color and texture out of these trousers and as we start to build the, uh, the, the colors back up later you'll see just how uh, much of an effect this has on such a subtle subtle little part of the miniature. So again, just doing it across the hair, being careful not to get us on the skin, as I said earlier. And then from there, we're going to use Dark Tone. Now, Dark Tone is kind of like a Null Noil, so this is just a black wash. So what I've done with this, as you can see, this is very thin. So I've added water to this one, just to thin this down a little bit, because we paint in directly onto white or onto a very, very light grey. I didn't want this to be just pure black because it would be too extreme. So instead what I've done is I've added a little bit of water to this just to allow this to be manipulated a little bit better and to give this a little bit more of a fine light grey sort of colour and tone. And you can see that already working on the shirt. So you can see that just sitting in all of those uh, creases and all of those folds. And as we build the light white colours back up later, we'll kind of get a really cool effect out of it. So going back now, we're going to start by going with the skin. So once I've put my base colors on, I always like to return to the skin first. So we're going to use that Cadian Flesh Tone, uh, which is the color that we used as the base. And we're going to build that back up by catching all of the areas of the uh, with, with the light would highlight. Now, Ben's face, uh, being a very, very small miniature, doesn't have a great deal of detail to it. So we're going to kind of make things up a little bit as we go along. That's all I'm going to do is try to cover his nose, his forehead, um, around sort of the... Um, the the cheekbones and of course the chin as well and then it's up to you then sort of how you want to kind of highlight around those cheekbones and things as we go but I'll kind of show you and talk you through that as we paint in and I'm gonna do the same thing just down his arms here uh, this left arm holding on to his revolver uh, just gonna paint down and around this and then what we're going to do, we're going to mix two colors together. So we're going to use the Cadian Flesh Tone that we've used as the base, but we're also going to mix a uh, bit of Kislev Flesh in as well. Now I like to describe this mixture or these mixtures as 50-50s. That just means one blob of each. So it's equal parts, really. So it's equal parts of these two colors is uh, the perfect step and the perfect stage um, to your first highlight. And again, as you can see, that's all I'm going to do here is just pick out the forehead, the nose, the cheekbones, and things like that. Now I'm going to try not to paint too much down the sides of his face, so just across the jawline and things like that, because I kind of want to give that the element of shade. And I'm also not going to paint where the eye sockets are and around the nose and things, because again, that's giving the element and that illusion of depth on the face and kind of giving you that idea that the face has a lot more depth and um, shade and shadow into it as well. You can see that I'm doing the same thing just across the arms, just picking out the muscle definition and the density just across uh, the arms here, just trying to leave some of that original color and original tone below. And again, by using a small amount of water with the paint as well, because it's always good to use thin paints, uh, these colors are gonna blend together and uh, have a really nice pleasing on the eye kind of subtle blend. Once that part is dry, we're going to use just the Kislev Flesh on its own. And again, doing the exact same thing. We're using the very, very tip of our brush to do these things. And again, if you followed the channel, you'll, knew, you'll know that I'm using a size 5 uh, five slash zero brush. This is a very, very small, fine detail brush. And again, as you can see, I'm just picking up those uh, cheekbones and across the nose and that forehead. And you can kind of now see where this light source is starting to come across his face. And we're starting to see where he's highlighting across those areas that we think the light is going to be catching. There we go. You can see just around the face there, we kind of get a little bit more definition through those shades and that illusion that the uh, wash has created. 
And again, I'm going to do the same thing just across the muscle tone again, just on those arms, just trying to pick out some of the areas where the muscles are popping, where we think the light would be catching and leaving the areas where we think the shade needs to sit so that it creates that depth and that definition to the character and to the model. So once that is done, we're going to go with Kislev Flesh and Flayed One Flesh. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, half and half of each. So this is a 50-50 mix. And we're going to do the same thing again. But we're going to be a little bit more gentle and careful about where we place this. As you can see, now I'm using a very, very fine, small stippling effect as well. And this is just so that I can control and be a little bit more... Uh, cautious as to where I want this highlight to be because this is going to be more of our extreme highlight This is going to be the one that is catching more of the light. So as you're looking on this model um, This tone is going to be the one that really makes that skin uh, that skin color and that skin texture pop off the model And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So again, just being as Gentle as possible using the very tip of the brush to just pick out those details and so just moving on to the trousers from there, we're going to go back with that dark rust color, but we're going to add uh, red leather into this as well. And again, this is a 50-50, so this is just a half of each, half and half mixture. And that's all we're going to do with a nice thin paint, as you can see, which is going to pick out all of those creases and all of those raised areas of the trousers. And this is the bit that is probably going to take uh, a little bit of time. So between the trousers and the shirt, these are the areas that are going to take up more of the time that you need to paint paint um, but as I normally say when I'm painting these areas uh, this is well well worth doing because the longer that you spend on the areas that are more defined and the areas that are more there's more detail uh, the better that the model will look so the overall finished piece will look really really nice and again it's that source of pride so as you're painting these areas up this is something that when it's dried and you look on the model, you'll think, wow, that looks really, really good. Um, it's something that your friends will notice when they're playing with the models, but it's also something that you can keep in your display cabinet and really show it off with pride as well. So once that bit is dry, we're just going to use the red leather on its own. And again, just using a nice thin down paint, I'm going to start to build this up using that exact same very, very thin uh, five to zero brush. And I'm just picking up those details. So the tie is going to be painted the same color as the trousers, because again, looking at the um, the sort of concept art and all of the different artwork that I can find of the original character from the original old school games, this seems to be along the lines of those colors. The other thing I did notice with uh, Ben in the original sort of artwork as well is that his trousers do tend to be a little bit of a pinstripe. Now, I wasn't going to go down the route with trying to paint those pinstripes in when we've got all these different folds and great looking creases as well. I kind of wanted this tutorial to be a little bit more simple um, and I thought that painting these trousers by hand as we are is going to take a little bit of time as it is. Um, so if you are brave enough and if you wanted to you could always add those pinstripes in as well uh, but for this tutorial I kind of opted out. Um, so I hope that that is cool and I hope that you like the finished piece anyway even without those pinstripes. This color really does stand out on these trousers. As we build in it, you can really see the effect and you can really see how much this is making the model just pop. It's just, just such a really nice color for those trousers. So once we've done the trousers, we're gonna move on and do the shirt in the same way. So again, using a nice thin down paint, uh, this does look like it goes on the model a little bit thicker than it actually is uh, with this ghost gray. Um, this paint is really good because it does show through the underneath color as well. So this will take two or three coats to get this color back up to the original sort of color that we had before we applied that very thin wash. And that's great because that gives you the opportunity to build the vibrancy and build the layers up as much as you like. So you could have some areas that aren't quite as thick or some areas that aren't quite as bright. And that gives you control on where you want your light source to be. So you can allow uh, more light source across the top and paint it uh, more vibrant towards the top and a little bit less down the bottom and things like that. So this is a really cool paint to paint for things like shirts. So as you can see, again, I'm using the very tip of the brush. I'm doing something that I've done many, many times on the channel as well. So if you've watched other videos, you'll know kind of where we are. And that is just using the brush strokes to kind of create the element of 
depth and texture and almost following along with those creases and creating creases of my own by using those brush strokes to add to that character and add to the depth of the model as well. And it's a really cool little technique. It's very quick and easy. It's not something that takes forever to do, uh, but it looks great on the model as well. So it's a really good in-between sort of stopgap where you can paint well without the need to spend hours and hours and hours on your model, but it also looks cool as well. So as you can see, just showing you a little bit more just around the collar area and just on the front as well of the shirt, as you can see, just using that sketch in motion that I've mentioned in previous videos where I'm just using the very tip of the brush and I'm just sketching this across and just painting this up in very, very thin layers like so. I'm just following along the dynamic pose of the model. You can see where all those creases are in the shirt and it kind of gives you an idea as to how the shirt and how the, the flow of the shirt is going. And pretty much that's all I'm doing is just following along the flow of the model and, and following on the way that the model is sort of standing and all these different uh, creases. And you can see already we're starting to get that shirt to really, really stand out. So the first step up and the first highlight to that is ghost grey with dead white. And again, to make things as simple as possible, this is just a 50-50 split. So just again, it's half of each paint just to make these step up uh, and to make these sort of um, highlights as easy to make as possible. You know, sometimes you think you've got to have one paint that highlights another paint perfectly and all these different things. And sometimes you can, but sometimes that's all you need is just the next step highlight halfway in between so you could make your base color then a halfway highlight then a full highlight and that becomes a lot more natural and a lot more easy to look at a lot more pleasing on the eye if you just go from the base color straight up to the highlight sometimes what you might find is it'll be too extreme and then you kind of have this really garish bright area on your model whereas by going up in those stop, uh, stop gaps and in those sort of half gaps it just creates that that really subtle illusion that really subtle sort of um, highlight in texture it's a really really great again quick and simple easy way to paint um, and you don't need to be an expert to do it so again you can see that i'm just picking out all of those creases and i'm just following around the model as much as i can uh, this is sped up of course i don't paint this fast um, i do take my time a lot lot more than than this is showing this looks like i'm painting like a crazy person but i'm not i can assure you uh, so once that is done then we're going to use the extreme highlight so that is just the dead white on its own and now we're going to be a little bit more selective as to where we place this so again just across the edge of the collar and now we're just going to pick out some of those creases again using the very tip of the brush like so and this is a cool cool again very cool easy easy technique and easy way of painting white that really really makes that white stand out it almost gives the white a little bit of a subtle sort of cool tone to it so kind of a cool texture and that's great when you're painting white because sometimes under certain light conditions white will turn sort of cool and a little bit blue and things like that so again it's just creating this this great sort of subtle uh, white shirt idea um, and, and just giving you the, the, the complete control over the creases it's a really cool little technique um, and it looks great on the model as well you know he, he really does look good it's cool because the vibrancy of the white is so bright that actually my light catching on it is is uh, so bright that my camera is actually struggling to, to cope with me painting it as you can see it looks so so vibrant now once the shirt is done, we're just going to go pick out some of the final details. Uh, so we're going to start with the shoes here and we're going back to that gold brown and just using a nice thin tone. As I said, by building this back up, we're really going to see uh, the colors uh, come through on this a little bit better. This isn't going to look so yellow now because we've got that little subtle hint of brown from the wash in there. So instead now this is going to create exactly what it says, more of like a gold brown, like a yellowish brown tone. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We don't want it to, to look too yellow, but we kind of want it to be a little bit sort of subtle in that, that yellowy brown kind of texture as well. So there you go again, just picking out all of those bits. What I'm doing is I'm just leaving the sole of the shoe, uh, the base color with the shade on so that that separates the sole of the shoe from the top of the shoe. Again, very, very simple, easy way to, uh, to, to, to paint and a great way of showing off the, uh, the different colors and textures. 
From there, now we're going to move on to the hair, and I'm going to use the Dark Rust 302, and this time I'm mixing this in again, half and half, with Orange Brown. And this is, again, a very, very cool color. It's another one of my favorites, the Orange Brown. It has a really good uh, orange color and a really good base color as well. But for something like this, when we paint in the hair, it really does allow that hair color and that brown color to really be different to the, the color that we've used for the trousers. And again, that splits the model up. That creates a more individual character to the model, and it separates um, those browns so that we're not painting with the same brown. It, it means that, that it allows the model to look a lot more unique and again it's more pleasing on the eye because if you painted all the same browns say if we did the shoes the trousers the hair the tie you're kind of monotone in your model so you're kind of losing a little bit of the character from your model uh, so sometimes it's good to mix those browns together get different browns so that although they're brown we still get in subtle hints of uh, something else that catches your eye and something else to look at so once that bit's done, we're just going to use the orange brown on its own. And again, using that very, very tip of the brush, I'm just painting the hair here. Uh, if you want, you can dry brush this. That's absolutely fine. Completely up to you how you paint your models. Um, I tend to try to paint the hair strands individually, as you can see, uh, purely because, again, it's that, that source of pride. And then we're just going to move on back to that dirty red just on that little book and we're just going to pick out some of the details on the book as well now as i mentioned earlier the silver i'm not going to do anything more to i'm happy with it being a really sort of toned down old-fashioned looking worn out revolver you can boost that up if you want with a little bit of a, a brighter silver if you like uh, but i'm not going to in this video uh, but all in all that is ben bertolucci done he is a great addition to my resident evil cast as you will see here um, and it's a really fun and simple little painting. It seems quite almost too easy because it's like two or three basic colors uh, But if you really spend the time on painting those creases up, uh, then it will look great But there you go. He is all done. You have to let me know in the comments below what you think and as always my friends Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your uh, Positivity for your comments and for helping me to uh, to grow this channel because this literally is just a hobby of mine is painting uh, So I really appreciate all of your input your feedback and everything thank you so much um so yeah hopefully i will see you guys on the next one